shitty weather. Why not put on a cardigan? <laughs> that was the cardigans. <laughs> and for what it's worth, a lovely tune there. Uh, oh, that's a joy. <laughs> we should definitely talk like that more. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Richard Ray, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilgerton, alright? Alright. Yeah? Right. Well, we got a, a jam packed show today. Go on. We got, we got, oh. We got so many feet. We got more features than Carl's got on his face, <laughs> which, is, which is about the same as Morph. Yeah. Very few. It's just, it's just really a head, isn't it? A little. That's where I've seen him before. More. On Take Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Rockbusters. That's that's Have we? still oh, going we know strong. No feelings on that. No, but he's he's, he's he's said he's going to um, buck his ideas up. We've got oh, chimpanzee that. Carl finds a, uh, an amusing uh, monkey or ape related story. Um, we've got uh, Khan in a film again. Right, excellent. Yeah, we've had a lot of great response from that, Carl, uh, on the internet. And it stuff, was my email. favourite thing we've done. People raving about that. Um, so and, what's, uh, uh, can we say what the film is? This and week? Excuse my friend, we've got some bloody great music. <laughs> oh, pardonnez moi. Why? I don't know. I guess we French. I wish I had <laughs> well, I'll just give you a, a taste. We got Oasis, Cardigans. You just heard there. We got Lloyd Carl. We got a bit of Pretenders coming up. Eminem, Feeder, Coldplay, all the greats. Can I play some TJ's fan club later? Yeah, 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 yeah. What should we have now? Oasis. Go on, then. Yeah. Brilliant. Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. It's of a Saturday. Yes. Thank you. XFM one hundred four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you sh we should uh, do the competition. The the. Uh, there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think Do you so. Say, it's yeah, so it's good we should exactly. we should tease it out of well, them. Well, it's it's a big it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've sure I haven't really. Well, I mean, like, like often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson and the documentary. Yeah. Now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. It and, uh, amazing I asked Carl's piece opinion. of work. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't say, mention anything about the uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his his sort of seven hotel suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing of note for Carl was he said to me. Did you notice how big his hands are? I tell you what, though, I did. What? Yeah, how are you looking? The man's got like a face that he's had reconstructed. Well, I can't I seem to say that's libelous. Yeah, no, but, no, um, he hasn't. He hasn't. He's, he's got had, an old he's had two. He's had two face. nose jobs. Yeah, and you're looking at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like. It's, it, there's a bit of androgyny there, but it's sort of like a. It is quite a um, petite. Sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these labourers' <laughs> hands come out. That's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? Well, you can't can accuse him of being a tranny. No, he's not. No, I'm, no, he's not. What a tranny. Are you saying? No, I know he's, he's not. got enough issues. Now you're accusing him. Of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came out that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really. I really felt sorry for him. Um, and uh, no, I think he cleared up a few things uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work, but. Um, uh, I did like the shopping spree. That was great. Extraordinary. Cause just going around just taste. pointing. I know it's it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's uh, anything sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like men. But if it, yeah, I mean, and it sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those. Uh, Porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or uh, you know, an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of What's transvestites. Well, it's like you get what the, the, was it about his hands? Well, you, you, know, you know when you get like a cab driver or something, right? And he he decides to uh, turn transvestite at about sixty, and he goes on Kilroy. Do you know right. what I mean? That way, he got a twin set of pearls, and he goes, "I've never felt so comfortable." But his hands are still big. He's got a little wig, and he's got the lipstick on, and he's with his teenage kids who are going, "Kill me." Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that well, why he was wearing that glove? You must be exactly. Yeah, but, but yeah. I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael, you've got a big hand. It would help him climb the trees. It, it's, it's right, yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, it, you know, it was alright. But, um, like, that got a load of attention in the press. But the Trisha program got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, was like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like 10 o'clock in the morning, I was at work. And he goes, uh, 
She so thinks out at ten o'clock. She so thinks you're uh, preparing yeah. this show. Most people go to work about eight or nine. You're watching Trisha and that. I said, no, what is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? Um, Freaks. Was it, f um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak? Mm, Siamese twins. Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again, because they repeat stuff on ITV2. Right. So I, I had my dinner late. <laughs> Right, mm. instead of having it at like one o'clock like I normally do, yeah. I had it at like two thirty. Yeah. Sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV two. Um, these Siamese twins. Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we, we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The airy kids crop up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was lighting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the airy kid. Right. And uh, last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was it was weird that this program was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what, what I think, you think you can't refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, right. I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam. Right, right. And, anyway. and, and that doesn't exist anymore. No, it's so, conjoined, oh. Carl. Yeah. Get the phrase right. But you'd think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. <laughs> you think that's least Siamese least twins, I'd say, well, that's, yeah. Now, were you stunned by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Right. Because they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh, God. Sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. God. What if one had bad breath? I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> 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 no. Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. There was, <laughs> was a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, amazing exactly. things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like like t early learning. Uh, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slightly open. Slight like dribble, <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen <laughs> it. You know, I hate that. Like when a cat sees a bird land on the balcony. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> it, 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 yeah. it can't believe its luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a like a birthday present? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? Um, I'd probably ask. Uh, yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. ...what, what would happen? <laughs> How would you handle that? <laughs> it's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what did he talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... I guess what I did today is <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so... Ah, <laughs> 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 brass in pocket, and if, uh, they're pretending to be good, they're doing a bloody good job of it. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> uh, Sticky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl is still buzzing about these conjoined twins. No, it's just... One of them, of course, had to be... Because one of them was sort of shorter than the other and had to be sort of wheeled around on a kind of trolley thing oh, by, this, by the other... By this the other isn't twin. Molly and Dolly, is it? No, they're not called... One's called Reba. And oh. I forget what the other one's called. Sheena, maybe, or something like that. Do you, uh, do you remember, Carl? No, I wasn't that impressed with the names. It's just... <laughs> yeah. So you immediately put them out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Those are rubbish names. I'm just... Uh, forget, 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 cough, forget, 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 they, forget they, they're gone. Were they British or American? American. Yeah, American. Oh, because I've, I've, I've seen some American ones. Well, like bizarrely, Jason. one of them was a... apparently a country music star. This is Molly and Dolly! Well, they're not called the Molly and Dolly. The one that joined at the Oi. The one that joined but they're the not, I think you've made up the Molly and no, Dolly. No, it was on Jerry Springer. There's a little one that s sits on a seat and the other one carries it round, uh, her round. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> They're not called Molly and Dolly. <laughs> there was something like that. They're called, well, we know that one of them's called Reba and I forget the other one. And one of them's a country and western singer or something. Yeah, and one of, but she was saying, yeah, I've just, uh, made a movie. It's coming out shortly <laughs> in theatres. <laughs> Is your and sister the other doing it? Yeah, and the other one said, oh, I'm not involved. <laughs> <laughs> I did, uh, it's utterly bizarre because they they live they they work so hard to live their lives separate. Yeah, they say oh, it's you all know, yeah, exactly. of course. So, yeah, you know they don't, they try not to. So so she's talking about her music career and the other one's sort of not taking any kind of credit for it, which is nice. It's, I it's weird though because when she was singing as well, the other one just stands there. She doesn't join in. She doesn't sort of dance. Offer backing or, vocals. Do you know what I mean? Make a group out of it. <laughs> yeah, a duo. Yeah, well. But it seems like we're sort of being horrible, but we're no, not. We're not. I mean, well, really no, we're not. No, we're thing, laughing but... at Carl's amazement at, mm. at this phenomenon. Sorry, I, I just got to say, we're not, we're not 
do you know, know the, taking do you know the, the mickey. The really weird thing about all this, right? What? And it's annoying because you were saying about, you know, oh, what should have Trisha have asked and all that. Yeah. But one of them mentioned, um, that one of them was adopted and the other one wasn't. Don't talk rubbish. <laughs> no, seriously. I didn't understand it, right? Of course then, you didn't. And then Trisha sort of said, well, let's have a chat and, and they were like, no, I don't want to go into that. What do you mean one was adopted? That's what he said, one of them- <laughs> I don't- don't quiz me on it, but that's- <laughs> that's what was- that's what was said. Hi there, I'm a- <laughs> Hello there, I'm a multi-millionaire. Oh, and yeah. I've uh, just seen your orphanage. Oh, I'd yeah, love lovely, to adopt one of your children. You'd like to adopt one? L I'd love to adopt a children, because I've got loads from around the world, so I'd love yeah. to adopt one. I'd, I'd give you $10,000 oh, towards oh, your- Oh, well, uh, well, 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 we're- we're speeding through then, yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. We've actually got two left. I so need one. I'm only interested right. in one. Yeah, I don't okay. need any more. Don't need any They're more sisters. They, uh, they're I know it would be tragedy to break them up, but I really need one. Now, break it up. There's the there's the rub, you see. Sure, because, sure. Um, you just need the one. There's $10,000 now. You can have that. I'll sign it now, but okay. I don't want to discuss I'll it I'll bring it around. I'll bring brilliant. it around. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Ding dong. Hi, yeah, brilliant. You brought my kid, right? Yeah, there she is there. That's a joy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just standing next to a bush. Yeah, do you want to- can you bring her out? No. Like, there's, like, like, there's nothing behind the bush, so just- you just want- I just want- I want to be able- I just want to be able to walk 360 degrees round her. Do you want her or not? Yes, I- I can't believe it! What's that little trolley? <laughs> He's talented. Oh dear. You're oh. talking nonsense, Carl. Well, whatever. <laughs> Feeder. That's it, just what I'm feeling. XFM. 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's time for the the newest quiz in town. <laughs> this is where Carl inserts himself into a seminal film. Last week, um, he was the little kid in Sixth Sense. You remember? To, uh, great acclaim. The critics loved it. They said a triumph. Uh, this week, he's fiddled with The Graduate. Um, this is the scene where, of course, uh, uh, he goes upstairs to the hotel room and, um, He's, uh, it's, it's on the cards. She's a dead set, Mrs. Robinson. Well, here we go then. So, uh, are you ready for it? I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Benjamin. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. i tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and, uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, bit weird. Uh, yeah, I've never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about my head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Heads should be it's round. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy arse. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> oh, that was a joy. Oh, dear. Oh. It was an absolute treat. Now, I should say that, obviously, uh, the prize is a copy of The Graduate. Now, bear in mind that XFM is giving away these prizes. Yeah. Carl is so cheap that he wouldn't even buy it on DVD. He's oh. bought it for six ninety nine on VHS. It'll be panned and scanned. It won't be widescreen. There's none of the extra features that you get on the DVD. Oh, That's look at you... Carl's face. He's gutted. Carl, did you pocket the rest of the cash? No, no. I have to use my own money to buy these, right? What, you're, you're using your own money to give this stuff away? Yeah. 
So I had to go and buy that. XFM is so cheap, I understand. I know. Right? I know. And, uh, it's not worth having it on DVD, is it? Why it's not? An, it's an old film, so. <laughs> So the quality is, is <laughs> do you know what I mean? They can't really tidy it up. <laughs> of course they can! They do it from a print. They don't do it from the video. They don't get, they don't get the video and go, let's make it into yeah, a DVD. An old Max copy <laughs> that someone knocking about. <laughs> uh, well anyway, you it's can- It's the same film though, isn't it? Uh, Fine, okay, well yeah, you're right. Yeah, so anyway, film, yeah. you can win, uh, six ninety-nines <laughs> worth of The Graduate. The question, and it's email only, Steve, uh, Steve, it's not Steve, it's Ricky, dot gervais at xfm.co.uk. The question is, name the actor that Carl uh, was taking the place of in the film, and of course the actress that he's performing opposite. Ricky dot gervais at xfm.co.uk. Lovely. Do you want to play something from the- I would love to. It would seem appropriate. Yeah. Hello darkness, my- Dear Mr. Simon and Mr. Garfunkel, please, let's not have the sound of silence. Let's have some more beautiful music. Get back together, please, quickly. <laughs> Uh, I think what? you should do every single link. Like <laughs> Brilliant, it's the best bit of the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so on XFM 104.9. Are we well, going to have you time go. to play the clip again before, uh, I don't know, before two o'clock, let's say? Are people not listening to the question? Is that what you are? Some just... people are not listening to the question. Oh dear. Okay, we'll, we'll play it again at about two then. And personally, any excuse to hear it again, because I thought it was I, I, th I think Carl should go out and get the DVD. I think it's embarrassing to give away the uh, Yeah, the you have to get it. You have to go out and buy the DVD later. Carl, on the DVD, it's got a booklet, it's got an audio commentary, it's got behind the scenes features, and it's got this pristine widescreen version of the film. You've got some cheap 699 version. Yeah, and so, VHS. because you were being mean, because it was your own money, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to waste that now, because yeah. no one wants it. So it's gonna cost you twice as much as it would have done if you just got the DVD the first time round. <laughs> a valuable mm. lesson learned. Have yeah. I re have I rewound it? <laughs> 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 There's a penalty if you've not. No, you haven't rewound it. Go and get the DVD later. This, the, they're gonna win a DVD. No, I looked at the DVD and it was 18 quid. I'm Go and get it! Quid for and it. claim it back! No, you've gotta wait What ages. a cheap station this is. It's outrageous. I mean, oh. Well, do you wanna go on with the other prizes with, uh, what we're giving away later? What, what is this for Rockbusters? Well, We don't give away prizes, we throw away prizes. <laughs> yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's it, really cleaning out, <laughs> cleaning yeah. out some drawers in XFM. Go on. I'm just having a quick look through before I- Cause we've sort of revamped Rockbusters a bit, there's that extra bit. In it now, in that audio bit. You're selling it. You're big, a big sell. Oh, we've not going straight there. into that yet. Then. There's no, a no, DVD. No, no, no. There's a DVD there. What's I'll, that? I'll go through them later, Rick. I just need to absorb it. Don't so, get excited. So, uh, who did uh, Carl play in the clip? What actor's place did he uh, take, and what actress played opposite him? Um, that's Ricky Dot Gervais. At XFM Dot Co Dot UK. Sure. Brilliant. Yeah. Is that it then? Let's what we got oh, coming up? We got some. Play a bit of Coldplay. Let's have a bit it. of Coldplay, be right. Coldplay, Yellow on XFM 104.9. Get it on DVD, it's an embarrassment. Seven quid's worth of old video, pan and scanned. I bought it now, that's what they're getting. Right. He's put a downer on it. All the work, you know, that went into that, and then just gonna fob them off with a bit of old celluloid like that. Well, listen, still to come, right? We've got, um, the, the monkey's thing. Oh, chimpanzee that! And when I was out last Sunday, right, at Johnny's birthday party, yeah. Steve was there, yeah. got talking about stuff, um, and a debate that we didn't really finish cropped up. It blew your mind, didn't it? Amazing. Oh, I, I know about this. Steve told me. This is the, uh, infinite amount of monkeys, um, or a monkey with a typewriter and an infinite amount of time would eventually come up with the works of Shakespeare. Yeah. There was no debate. It's a philosophical, mathematical problem. There's no debate. It's true. It won't happen. No, listen, Carl, listen. Infinity sorts it all out for you, right? An infinite amount of monkeys at a typewriter, right? They would do- they do everything. They type everything. Infinity just sorts it all out for you. There's no getting to it and they're going, oh well, uh, let's have a look what they've done. <gasps> this one's come close. Did Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> it would do it all. It would type everything ever possible, conceivable. 
Yeah, but... It's a, it's a, it's a mathematical well, infinity. Well, we've heard your side of the argument, <laughs> <laughs> And I'll be honest with you, it's a persuasive one, but let's hear Carl, because he yeah. heard about this in a pub last week, yeah, so what's he's your got problem? some strong What's your problem with it? What's your problem with it? Well, f first of all, right, you're saying it's a load of monkeys. It's not just one monkey that's- It depends. That can live forever. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's either a, a chimpanzee with a typewriter with an infinite amount of time, he would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything ever possible, okay? Or it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already that's, that's sort of, that's not right. You either need to have what one monkey- What do you mean, what, what, you mean, Let, uh, employment laws, point. what you do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out, please. Okay. If it's one monkey- Yeah. With a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't, it's not- Keep in, going! Crying. If you've got a load of monkeys, it's like, it's like if you have too many, what's that saying about too many chefs- Too many spoil? chimps spoil the soup. Right, well it's the same thing, it's like, well I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it, I was gonna put salt in it, and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying uh, is- I, I, just leave him going. I can't be bothered, I Steve. I want to hear, I want uh, to hear th the This blows my mind, it, it doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just, I just don't think it will happen. What I do mean, you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you, by definition. Well, what's stopping them typing the same thing again? They would. They, in fact, the problem should be, if you had an infinite amount uh, uh, of time, that, um, it would type, that works with Shakespeare, an infinite amount of times, and everything else, an infinite amount of times. But, you know, that's not, that's just, that's, that's not as- But not, not Shakespeare. Oh! SHUT UP! YOU, you know, IDIOT! Rick, do you know what he said to me? I said to him, uh, I just explained it to him, I said, God. you've got an infinite number of rankings, infinite number of typewriters, they will e type the complete works of Shakespeare. He yeah. said, have they read Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot! Play a record, said, no, I'm not having this conversation. Not doing it from I'm not having it, I'm not having it, because it really, really winds me up. But you're saying they'll do it with no spelling errors. Well, they do it, uh, uh, they do it an infinite amount of times. And they do it, they do it wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it, and they spell, uh, the last full stop, uh, wrong an infinite amount of times. And they do it, and they get one thing wrong in Hamlet wrong an infinite amount of times. They do everything an infinite amount of times. But are they going off a story that they've- Play a record, Carl, cause I'm gonna knock you out! I'm just saying- Shut up! Do they know the story? Oh, God. They're the... monkeys! Oh, Christ. No, right. what? Okay. What? Lloyd Cole, she's a girl and I'm a man. Good that, innit? It's on XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. As yeah. ever, Rick, there's always someone who steps in to defend Carl. Uh, uh, okay, uh, what is the defence? What is the defence? Here's a, an email from Scott Coomer. He says, Carl is actually right. I've got an A-level in statistics and probability. It doesn't matter how long they have and how many monkeys you have, you cannot guarantee they would type the complete works of Shakespeare. Infinity makes it probable they, they would get it right, but not definite. Yeah. Well, y yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. No. No, you weren't saying, Carl. You don't understand it. Infinity sort of sorts it out. That if they do- if they do- if they do anything, they're- they nearly do everything, won't they? No, I mean, they'll give it a good shot. Right? <laughs> no, that's not the point. But, but the I'd point is I'd be surprised if they did one page right. Right, right. listen. <laughs> it's not to do with consciousness. It's not to do with them aiming. They are it's, just bashing away it's at like, the keyboard. It's, it's like they're, they're, they're used to show that there isn't consciousness. They, they, they chose the chimpanzee because it can type, presumably, it's hit because, the keyboard. It's because they hadn't come across you at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's to take out thought out of it. It's to take out reason and trying, right? Mm. It's just random. They're saying that if you typed enough things, if the computer was left like that, typing everything, if you left it for an infinite amount of time, and they chose Shakespeare because there is meaning behind it, and it's difficult to get it exactly right, to show you that infinity would come up with a sh it's not just Shakespeare, it's every novel. It's everything. Fairly eloquent there from Gervais. A quick repost, please, from Carl Pilkington. No, I'm just saying what I don't understand. If it hasn't read it, then how does uh, it know where it's going? Oh! I- listen, right, I, okay, listen, right, I- I- can I can't- I, can I just- Look, can I just explain to people, right? Some people have said, oh, why are you cruel to Carl? He drives me mental with things well. like that. What do you mean, well? Can well, I just- well, let me just- You just, deny you it, just take a breather. How do I do your editing? 
he keeps coming in the week. You know that I work here properly, <laughs> yeah, in the week, don't I? Yeah, I've got a proper job, yeah? Yeah. Uh, should be nine to five, but I normally get in at about eight o'clock and work A lot of people get in at eight o'clock. Working hard, trying to do my job. Three times this week, I've been rushing around, I walk past my little studio, he's sat in there, all right? <laughs> now, because I've got this sort of job, I can get away with it. I said to him, if I was a doctor... <laughs> Would he keep coming to me practice? If you were a doctor, there'd be <laughs> severe problems with the NHS. Well, oh, imagine so that. Uh, I the standards I, would have lowered so much we to, go to if lunch. you can arrive at the hospital, you're a well, doctor. Well, pop in, I'll go to lunch, don't we? We have a little lunch break, don't we? I go, come on, let's go now. He goes, I'm busy. I go, come on, let's go now. He's going, oh, you're doing me, head in. Well, when I was talking about the monkey conundrum with Carl, he said to me, right, if I had a day off work, and I was, say, watching the TV, and with one hand I was typing uh, a typewriter, <laughs> would I type Shakespeare? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, but you see, there's certain things. We were talking a little bit about this stuff the other week, weren't we? When we said uh, <laughs> you were going on about Einstein, and I said he's not that good. Um, <laughs> you know, E equals MC squared. You know, it sounds good, but I've never used it. And that, right? <laughs> I've never you know. used it. Uh, you haven't used two and two equals four, Carl. The fellow with an apple fell on his head. You know. It could have been anyone sat under that tree. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky. Yeah. And, and it just Newton to gets be a all genius. Newton gets all the credit <laughs> no, yeah. for his mean? laws of the universe. <laughs> well, other people were working whilst he was having a lunch break under the okay. tree. So in a way, it's like he didn't deserve to have that again, success story. Again, forget the apple and the tree and whether he was sitting down or having a lunch break. It's, it's totally irrelevant. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, there's certain things that will just happen. You know, it's like I think we were talking when we were out eating the other week. We were talking about Noel Gallagher. Well, this is reason the, the monkey right. discussion came up, right? We God. were- Noel Gallagher- I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Rick, I don't want to misquote Noel. I'm like Herbert Lom in Clue Song and I get a twitch whenever he opens his mouth. I don't know what- I don't know- I don't know where to start with some of his statements. Well, as I say, this all- this discussion began because we were talking about a quote that Noel Gallagher supposedly gave. Now, I don't want to misquote Gallagher, but the gist of it was that he said, um, uh, had I- uh, written Wonderwall or whatever, instead of the Beatles writing Strawberry Fields or whatever, I'd be the one that was considered the great songwriter and it wouldn't be the Beatles, you know. It's just the fact that they came first that meant that they get all the credit as being the greatest band I in the world. I don't know where to start with that statement and, either. I mean, that's kind of a good thing and, uh, and he's, you know, well, whatever, we know what you think, we think of that. What was your point, Carl? I, you agreed with him, didn't you? Yeah, I reckon, right, do you know we've talked about putting a baby in a room before and it, and it'll know what colour it is and stuff. If, if you've got a room that's painted red, Right, but uh, forget that, because that's going to confuse Hear him out, hear him out. Can I, can I uh, hear listen him out. to me. Say if they did some new TV show, right, like, um, what's that film with Jim Carrey in where the, uh... The Truman Show. The Truman Show, right? So they make up a little room, and, uh, some woman has some kids, and you say, right, let's put the kids in this room, and they don't know what's going on outside, they, they, they don't know anything about, like, EastEnders and that, it's like their little world, right? They don't know anything that's gone on. How could a child survive without EastEnders? <laughs> right, listen, so, he's sat in the room, right, and then when they're all asleep- right, this, Wait for this bit. Someone pops- have, have you heard this Yeah, bit? wait for this bit. They're all in a room. Yeah. They're asleep. Yeah. Someone pops in, puts a guitar next to the bed, <laughs> right, nips off out again. They wake up in the morning, and uh, one of them goes, what's this? They don't even know it's a guitar because they've never seen one, right? They're talking so, English though. Yeah. We just left the guitar out of the vocabulary. Right, so... There's plenty more to come. So, one of them will pick it up, and they'll go, I don't know what it is, and they'll start strumming, they'll go, that sounds good, doesn't it? Give them a few weeks, they could come up with Hey Jude. Whereas, saying, typing Shakespeare, a monkey that can't even spell... I see that. <laughs> you can't answer it. Can't answer I might it. come with you, Rick, if that's okay, right. Okay, we've got, uh, we've got sort of that Christmas it. special as well, oh, Yeah, no, sure, sure. Oh, I see okay. that. Yeah, I'm sure not, then, as well. Cheers, Carl. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flaming Lips, Yashimi Battles the Pink Robots, and XFM 104.9. Before the ad break, Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle. Great track. Lovely to hear that. Brilliant thing. track. We're not scared of playing that sort of stuff, are we? Indeed. We've got some great... I think we're underestimated here. People think we're just like, you know, two guys and a buffoon in a room. <laughs> but we're so much more than that. We, you know, we try and put together a whole package for them, don't yeah. they, for their Saturday afternoon listening pleasure. If there was an infinite number of us three in an infinite, in an infinite number of studios, yeah. broadcasting for an infinite number of shows, 
Would we ever do anything half decent? Yeah, we eventually. Would we ultimately come up with something quite what good? What was that email that you were laughing at? I can't, it's too rude. What does it say? It's well, too, it's too nasty. Oh, oh go on, give me the gist of it. The gist of it was that, um, it would mean that if there was that infinite number of monkeys, eventually, besides the fact that they would type the complete works of Shakespeare, they would also type the sentence, Carl Pilkington is a genius, but the email also said it would also type, Ricky Gervais is a, I can't say the word, but, uh. I know. Yeah. But the number of times they type it and write, Carl Pilkington is a genius and Ricky Gervais is a cund. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were, they were, that would be there a lot. Um, yeah. Before we uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. Dickers! Richie Anderson! Anderson! Dicky Ducky Doo! Richard Anderson. Well, thanks for emailing. He's, and, uh, my, uh, he's my biggest fan. He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, that's the great said. thing about Dicky. And from Anders this week, he says, Ricky, I'm lazy, I talk nonsense, I'm badly organised, and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show? <laughs> um, uh, possibly, uh, Anders, maybe send in a CV or email a CV. He's put a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? <laughs> all right, ask him if he's a goggle-eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't no, mean. There's no need to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean nasty. you. No did need I? to get nasty. Well, well, so I was thinking about that actually, Steve. Oh God. <laughs> Just talking of. Of the old, uh... What? What? Talking of the what? No. Do you know, like... It's better be you, good. No. You don't have that many girlfriends and that. What, what do you mean? Carl, why are we on this? I wasn't- I was defending you in the whole monkey discussion. Come on, what's oh, your point? No, what's your point? What's your point? No, what's the point? What's the point? I just was thinking... <sighs> if there was an infinite number of Steves? <laughs> 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 you're not, you, you know, you're an odd-looking fella. Ah! Come on, Carl, get to the- No, you know I know that. I've told you that loads of times. What do you quick. mean, you know I know that? Well, there's no point pretending anymore. <laughs> Steve! I'm- I'm flabbergasted. But also, you don't like spending money, right? <gasps> He's mean and weird-looking! Valentine's Day. No. <laughs> I'm gonna- oh. Are you sort of, oh. uh, you know. You've got to love him though, haven't you? What What are you happier with? The fact that no girls like you enough, right? <laughs> this is meant- this is really mental! Or, are you happy because you don't have to spend any money on a card for someone? Which a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have- let's have more monkey news. What well, have we got? No, wait, we've got a- We've got so answer, much to get into this show. Insults, We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What angers me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was- well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. Right? Condoms? You bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can have a go at me. <laughs> to no, be fair. No. no, but I don't just treat her on Valentine's. I'm always- do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. You don't even treat her at Christmas or on her <laughs> birthday. On when do you treat her? Hang on a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute there. Oh, why I order. <laughs> what? Well. Wait a time. minute. What was that? Tiffany Dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, <laughs> and I've only met her twice. <laughs> I took her out last night and she enjoyed herself. Where'd yeah. you go? Until she had to write the check. Where'd you go? Where'd to, you go? Uh, to a chippy. A, a really. <laughs> Play record! Is it chippy? <laughs> no, a really a quality one. Right. Oh, God! One. Under a fibre for two. Oh, nice lots. wrapping. Not newspaper, greaseproof paper. And bread. And bread. Sometimes on XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. We've got so much to get through. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, all right. London's shit, isn't it? Um, sorry, shouldn't swear on an on air on air studio. Never, never swear on an on air studio. Yeah. Um, apologies. Not really swearing, is it? I'll tell you what swearing is. <laughs> oh. oh. Um. So uh, yeah, graduate. You're gonna play that again and give a winner. Give a winner. Well, let's hear it. Uh, so it's Carl Pilkington featuring in <laughs> The Graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go then. So, uh, are you ready for it? I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Benjamin. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A 
hang it. I'll tell you what, I've, uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've, uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about my head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Heads should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy arse. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, oh dear. A classic, an Oscar winning classic. Oh, Carl Pilkington in The Graduate. But what was the question, Steve? The question was which actor was Carl Pilkington taking the role of? Well, and that's easy. Everyone which actress knows that. was he uh, performing opposite? I know that. And the answer is Ricky Hoffman mm -hmm. and um, uh, Bancroft. And Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, and the <laughs> 699 VHS cassette. Is going to Laura Gomez because she says that she'd be happy with the VHS, not the DVD. So, uh, best of luck to her. I hope she enjoys that. All right. Yeah. What are we doing next week? Uh, I've oh, got loads of. Um, uh, I quite like hearing Carl in a sort of seductive environment. It gives you another insight into him. It gives you another dimension. I know. E.T. It is then. <laughs> Exhibit X and the track X. Have you seen Eight Mile? Really? I, I, I really enjoyed it. You notice Exhibit makes a little cameo in that. Yeah, and uh, that that last bit, that that wrap off at the end, was, I, was lovely. It was so. It was just like it was like Rocky or something. Should we have just... a wrap off maybe next week? Yeah, <laughs> the three yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah, let's try and um, uh, master the art of talking yeah, civilly really to mean. each other first before we start making it rhyme. <laughs> oh, Rockbusters, Carl. Yeah. I'm not a champion of rockbusters, as you know, but I think it's overstayed its welcome. But I'm going well, to go along I think with Carl's it. just giving the fans what they want here. Okay. It's yeah. a popular thing, isn't it? Got the, some good prizes. The press well, behind it. <laughs> let me tell you what the prizes are. Uh, it's a dance music compilation, Cream Trance Anthems 2003. Brilliant. I play a lot of trance on well, this Well, I, I put that on quite a lot and don't <laughs> do it to myself. Uh, there's the uh, original motion picture soundtrack to the forthcoming film Adaptation. When you've seen the film, uh, I'm sure that will mean more to you. You like that, good, don't you? It's a good movie, yeah. Nicolas Cage I playing himself and a twin brother. And uh, it's written by uh, Spike. Uh, it's directed by Spike John. Joined at the uh, what? Uh, no, no, they're not joined no. at the hip at all, no. or or at the face. And uh, we've also got the best one-hit wonders album in the world ever. What we got on there? We got things like uh, the Crazy World of Arthur Brown, brilliant. Um, Nana, Ninety Nine Red Balloons. The Rembrandt. In fact, it kicks off with Nana. Sure. Uh, that's followed up by I'll Be There for You, the theme from Friends by the Rembrandts. Yeah. And of course, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Brilliant. Deep Blue Something. <laughs> is that the worst name ever? <laughs> I think it possibly is. No, Sixpence <laughs> None the Richer. Sixpence None the Richer. That's a pretty good. bad name. Okay, again, we we I know we've got a lot of uh, chill out fans who listen yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah, so, um, yeah, 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 the best yeah. chill out album ever. Yeah. Bear in mind, of course, all these prizes collated by uh, Carl from I guess People's Drawers. Yeah, looking in a drawer. Looking in a drawer. <laughs> oh, dearie me. What is it? The only thing probably worth having is a, um, I mean, it's topical, if nothing else, Carl. A seven inch by the White Stripes, Merry Christmas from the White Stripes. That was their, um, exclusive Brilliant. Christmas single. So, if yeah, you're that's, it's, that's it's early, isn't it? That's it's it's you get that. It is worth it. A lot of people have got to wait 11 months before that's released. Yeah. Or is it last <laughs> Christmas? <is? laughs> exactly. And I have never heard of this DVD. Go on. I like to think of myself as being fairly familiar with TV and films, but I have never heard of Stephen King's Rose Red. <laughs> Welcome on to DVD. a place evil calls home. 
And uh, it's on DVD, it's Certificate 12, so don't imagine anything too shocking. And it looks uh, appalling. Is Rosewood Mansion truly haunted to find out Professor da 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 Okay, we've got the gist of it. They're not very good prizes, they're cobbled together, but if you've got nothing better to do, call in if you know the answers to these clues. It's Rockbusters. Let's not let them call in, Rick. Please don't let these people call in. No, don't let them call in. It's email only. Carl, don't interrupt me. I'm just... Um, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email only. I can't stress that enough. We just don't want to speak to you people. <laughs> right, go on. Right, so I give some initials out and a cryptic clue and it makes up the answer and that. Wow, well, sometimes it does, yeah. Go there's on. two of them, <laughs> there's a new aspect which I'll explain about in a minute. Oh, so, God. the first one is, uh, cryptic clue is, well, if you would have been wearing an helmet it would have been alright. <coughs> and the initial there is B, right? So, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. B, right? Uh, band or an artist. Second one, uh, why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? <laughs> okay. All right, this initials. fills me with... Oh. D, S, D, S. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? All right? And the, uh, final bit, <laughs> two rockbusters. Uh, it's a new bit. Last week I played you this. <laughs> His face goes along right. with it. That's uh, that's someone beating up a dog. That was smack my bitch up, right? So here's some sound effects and that, and they make up a song. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to him talk Hang on, all day. Let's have a listen to the effects. <laughs> right. That's terrifying. Right, I told you not to play that one. It's rubbish. No one will get that. Well, we'll see. I heard that a couple of weeks ago. So what I said it's rubbish. No one'll get it. No, it's not the one you think it is. Ah, right. So um, email in ricky.gervais@xfm.co.uk and you can win that. Stuff. I'm a little bit confused. Let me t I, I, I'm here. I've heard what you're saying. We've discussed this in the past. I don't know what's happening. What's that? Is that, a, is that a clue? That's a cryptic clue. That's that um, screaming to a song. Is it? Do a screaming. Well, don't say it. So it should stand up by itself. Don't give him any clue. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. So this is the name of a song. It's not a band or an artist, yeah, the that's, sound that's, effects. That's so the song. first two are bands or artists, and the the, the last one <laughs> is the name <laughs> of a song. I said we should abandon this! I said we should just pack it in! What, the show? Yes! <laughs> Come on, someone talk. <laughs> I'm looking at his face, his headphones are too loud. Instead of turning them down, he's just grimacing, going, these are too loud. <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah. How have you lived this long? How did you make it to 30 without getting squashed or eating something deadly poisonous? Well, I told you, he used to choke a lot. We've had an email from, uh, uh, Placebo, the bitter end. We've had an email from Andrew Forrest, who has just simply entitled it, Carl Pillockton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl Pillockton. What do you think of that? And that's gotta be your new name from now on. Oh. Uh, I had a mate who, uh, who used to use it. What, he used to call you that? Yeah. Was that your nickname at school, Pillockton? No, it's not my nickname. It is now. No, it's not. It is now. Pillockton. Pillockton. Oi, Pillockton. Oi. Pillockton. Pillockton, do my own work. Where actually. do you live? Where do you come from? Pillockton? No, there's this lad who, uh, called Mark, right, who used to go to school with, who, uh, used to call me that. And, uh, his mum, right, was, like, obsessed with cleaning. And I was never allowed in their flat. <laughs> <laughs> he makes the place look untidy. So she used to, I don't know if it was just me or all his mates, but I used to turn up and she goes, yeah, he is him, but you know what you've got to do? And I used to have to go round the side of his flat, and he had a computer, right, which he used to play, I, I didn't have one at that point, but he had one, and I used to have to go round the side of the flat and stand at his bedroom window with his window open and I'd be sort of leaning in playing the game. <laughs> you are joking. Not, his you had the weirdest <laughs> ringing I've ever heard. The, the things you were willing to do <laughs> is the strangest, what is this town like? No, stop going. Was, it, was there always the music? <laughs> There's the horse in the house there. Oh look at these two kids with big heads and webbed feet. Alright, alright Ronnie, alright Reggie. What, what no, was it was... like? She was, she was obsessed. It is like you've grown up in a cartoon made for children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, his mum was really, um, obsessed with cleaning. I, I, 
when, um... Can I play through his window? <laughs> I used to... Put used to Mrs. Rams on. bottom, can I play through Mark's window? <laughs> Aye, you know what you have to do. She used to be up to that. Is that Pinnockton again? <laughs> <laughs> have you washed your hands? Well, up till three in the morning, washing. She used to be up doing the tiles in the kitchen. Washing until three in the morning? Until three in the morning. And for ages and ages, I, that's, that's saying that out on the tiles, I used to think that came from, like, his mum. Because she was out, like, cl cleaning them late. So, until I was about thirteen, I thought that saying, out late, on the tiles, Yeah. Was and now you're not confused by anything. Well, <laughs> there's no misunderstandings in your life now, is there? So, so what? Did, was he was allowed to walk in and out of the house? Was no, he? he? He was all right, but and he used to come round to ours a lot. And my mum used to get these pies from Agenbacks, right? <laughs> so I don't know what that is. It's at that bakery where they used to chuck the cakes out the back. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you about. Yeah. And oh, and you at six? Yeah, six. He loved it, but I could never go round to theirs. Or if I did, it was like, well, yeah, he is in, and I go all right, and then I'd, I'd walk round the side of the flat. <laughs> Stand outside. <laughs> Why did you ever knock at the door? Why don't you just go around and knock on the window? Just to check his in, because he wasn't always in his room. If you he say was it was in the a lounge, a... he'd have to go to his bedroom and then... That's you where say to meet you. I, this is the strangest... And you'd play a computer game through the window. You yeah. say it was a flat. It wasn't like a fifth story one and you had to get in one of those kind of cleaning contraptions <laughs> and like winch your way up. On the, on I the love floor. the idea of that. So. Oh, Pillockton. So, right, uh, we're done what, Wes? What, have you got me any, uh, chimpanzee that? We've or? got monkey news still, still to cram in in the next, like, Let's do monkey news now. I, no, I need some monkey no, news. No, I think we've done enough here, right? What do you mean? I think we've done enough here. We'll, we'll play a little song, eh? What? Play, um, play the verb. Alright. He's getting all stressed because I screamed. Sparky stream, Teenage Fan Club. I tell you, I'm sick of the screaming, Rick. I'm <laughs> sick of that. I mean, no wonder Carl hates you, and that is the word I don't use often, but he does, and I've spoken to him in the past, and he loathes you. Monkey news. Give us one of the screams so the audience at home gets a taste of it. I'm taking my headphones off. No, I'm not going to scream. Go on, let's see what they ah! Right, That come wasn't on. what you were doing. Uh, was it worse than that? Yes! Right, come on, monkey news. We're it's not, not called we're monkey not, news. It's not called monkey news. Uh, chimpanzee, we're not gonna pack all the monkey stuff in. We've got a quarter of an hour. What, what other show can say that? <laughs> yeah. We've got to, we're not gonna pack in all the monkey yeah. news. We've got 15 minutes but we can't get all the monkey information <laughs> in. Right, come on. Well, you're gonna love this one. Uh, go on. Let's, is have there... the, uh, let's have the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Right, Um, I don't know how recent this was. Oh, God. 17th century? But it, ha it happened in Acne, right? Uh, if you're outside London, that's in that place in London. Um, and it's this monkey that's going about acne, nicking DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Even the monkey didn't go for videos. <laughs> Even the monkey knew. Well, there's no point in getting on VHS. The you're on VHS. <laughs> you're having a... <laughs> Throw it back. Right, and... There's a girl called Lisa who works in our office here, right, and I mentioned it to her because uh, she lives in Hackney. I said, uh, you familiar with this? And, uh, she said, oh, I remember something about it, which annoyed me. The fact that a monkey's running riot, but she couldn't, she didn't know the full story, <laughs> and she lives there. What, is, what do you mean a monkey? Do you mean a, do you mean a chimpanzee? Or a um, monkey? I don't know, is he a zoo in Acne? Is he a zoo there? I don't, I don't know, know what sort it was, but it, it, it was like- Is there on. a zoo in Hackney? I don't know, I don't know, that's what I was asking. <laughs> so, right, um, get on with the story. So anyway, so yeah, it's been robbing stuff. And, um, <laughs> the, the other bit that really puzzled me, right, is the fact that- And you're not easily puzzled by monkey news. They took fingerprints. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, they took fingerprints presumably because they didn't know it was a monkey to start with. No, they did. They saw it, they saw it, nicking stuff, <laughs> and they said, get fingerprints. What? So that means there's more than just one doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack. He had to fax them to Interpol. Yeah, yeah. We know that is, yeah. It's Brian, it's Brian the monkey. Yeah. Yeah. So Sorry, I don't understand. He was stealing DVDs, specifically DVDs. Yeah, DVDs, I think it said watches and stuff. What, breaking into homes? Yeah, in Hackney. Maybe Are you sure it wasn't a kid with a mask on? No, seriously. How was he breaking into homes? They're good, At the they? drain pipe. They're good, aren't they? They're good, aren't they? <laughs> but why would they do so that? So is that the news? Well, that's what, how much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news? For, the, for this week. Well, I don't know that it's true. 
Again, I've got nothing there was, to- there was other stuff, there was another story that I found about a monkey, but I'd, I would like to know from someone if- in Hackney if- Do you know what I mean? And I missed that one on Crime Watch, which would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> right? But there was another story about one that, uh, kept getting on buses, not paying its fare- Not paying its fare? <laughs> and just sat in the corner reading the paper. <laughs> reading the paper, Carl! You're an idiot! <laughs> well that- that wasn't in London. You're an idiot! You know, that was in America. It wouldn't read anyway. the paper. Why would it read the paper? Because it was its way of sort of going, oh, well, if I'm reading something, maybe the inspector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> the inspector will notice my <laughs> hairy hands. Oh, Carl, you're such a fool! Well, Pilotton. Uh, Carl, Carl, Pilotton. just had a news flash that an infinite number of monkeys in Hackney and icking an infinite number of typewriters. Yeah. We don't no. know what for. At this stage, we've got no more information. And they've, they've taken back an infinite amount of graduate on <laughs> video. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. rubbish. <laughs> Through the glass, seeing the light. I just think the people, sort of, uh, other Saturday, going, uh, you coming shopping? I go, I can't, I'm listening to, uh, <laughs> XFM, there might be some monkey news. <laughs> and they waited two hours for that. That one, what sort of, what sort of a show has a feature called monkey news? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, the, uh, the monkey story has been corroborated. Someone Which been, one? Uh, well, this one, uh, it says, uh, police in Britain this week are on the lookout for a very different kind of burglar, a chimpanzee who has been sighted breaking into a house in Hackney, stealing a mobile phone and leaving. The chimp is also the prime suspect in a break and entry in a nearby house where part of a radio was taken. One policeman stated that it might have been trained to steal, but a monkey's not gonna think, that's a mobile phone, I'll just have that. Look at Carl's face. Yeah. Fact. Oh. That's fact. So, um, rockbusters then. Yeah. Okay, get these out of the way, we. Running out of time now. I have to say now that so. we've had no answers that have attempted even to guess all three. Right, you see, now, see, that's because you're an idiot. Uh, right, okay, right, do, do the question, do the questions and the answers, and uh, if, 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 if I think that it's either too hard or ungettable because it's stupid, we're binning it. Right. I thought we'd already binned it, I'm annoyed. But right, come on, do, 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 what was the, do, do it quickly. Uh, the first one was, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. Right, what's the answer? That was B. What's the answer? Busted. Right, that works, all Busted, right. that's fair enough. Did anyone get that? I assume no. some people got- No. People have given up, Rick. People aren't even bothering to contribute. Right, what's the next one? They've just ignored it like it never happened. Uh, Busted. Second Busted. one. Um, Busted. Um, why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Go on. That was DS. Yeah. Uh, 70s band, Detroit Spinners. <laughs> The Detroit Spinners have become the D-Trout Spinners. Yeah. Okay. Um. Brilliant. And then the final bit, I'll play you some effects. Let's hear like this. this. Let's hear <laughs> it's terrifying, Carl. It's simple. <gasps> well, what's happened there? What, what was happening? What no, 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 what's the answer? That was, uh, Born Slippy. She, the woman was having a baby, the doctor tried to grab it, it fell. To the floor. <laughs> That's in your head, Carl. That's just a load of screams. That's in your head. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm. I, I, do you know what? I haven't even got onto Warren Slippy. I'm still on the <laughs> Trout Spinners. Well, let's put a song. That's it. I, I don't. I, I don't know what to say. Steve, a song for the. A song for the ladies, surely. Uh, Did anyone with, get any of those? Let's end with Nick Drake. And the beautiful river man, and we'll see you next week, and hopefully oh, more buskers will be ditched. Detroit spinners. Well, don't keep saying it. <laughs> <laughs>